and thanks for Butterbean for uh, for joining us here on the Mayhem Show. But on the line now is the guy he's going to face this Friday at FNW in Cheswick, PA. Uh, friend of the show. Uh, he was on here last in October, uh, way back on episode 188. Sterling James Keenan, the international badass. How are you doing tonight? I'm fantastic. How are you? Let me let me make it a quick correction on your intro I, I appreciate the fantastic intro but i'm not only the guy that will face butterbean mm-hmm. i'm the guy that's gonna beat butterbean <laughs> awesome awesome um now so so you're in the international badass now is that is that uh is that straight from your uh i know you just got off some international tours the last we talked to you yeah you know um i honestly don't even know where that name actually came from i think <laughs> I, I probably referred to myself as such once or twice just kind of on the fly in a promo or something and someone picked up on it and kind of ran with it. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of stuck. So that's, that's, that's really what the, as deep as the story behind that is. Excellent. <laughs> now I think last we were talking to you, uh, you guys were just starting to do shows out there in Cheswick PA, which I think was a new area for you. Uh, how have those been going? I know I've been hearing from some friends. There've been some great shows out there, but, uh, how's been, how's been going? How's been the crowds out there? Uh, they've been awesome. Uh, the crowds have been steady. Um, uh, arguably the biggest we've drawn in quite some time. I mean, I don't know exact numbers, but they, they've been solid. You know, some of the better independent wrestling crowds that I wrestled in front of, and that goes beyond Pittsburgh. I mean, they've been pretty nice. And uh, guys from the Chess Arena are awesome. They, they really work just as hard as we do as far as setting up with the production. And mm-hmm. we're, this isn't your typical independent show where, you know, it's a high school gymnasium and there's a black curtain just hanging, and that's where guys come out. We have a full-blown stage entrance and professional light system. The, the guys from the Chess Arena actually hook us up with the same lighting system that they use when rock bands come in. You know, so we awesome. have the same the same setup and all the the tricks and gadgets that you know Kip Bush and Gage or whatever band comes in actually has at their disposal. So it's pretty cool. How how was it working in the same venue that Snoop Dogg's recently performed? <laughs> Fantastic! <laughs> yeah, it's, it's awesome. I, any any time you get to follow in the footsteps of someone like Snoop Dogg, it's something <laughs> to get excited about. Plus, like I, I just actually went to Chester Arena a few weeks ago and. Uh, Saw kill switching gauge, so that was kind of cool too. You know that they performed on the same stage that we we use as our entranceway, so that was a little bit of a thrill. I'm a big fan of those guys. Awesome, and of course I know I know I've been out there for the TNA show. It's a pretty big venue, so it really really yeah, nice it size is. For... It, it, I was actually there for the TNA show mm-hmm. as well, and um, and they obviously packed it, you know, to the gills. It was it, they were they were. Mm-hmm. I, I want to say there was somewhere around 900 people there. I think mm-hmm. was the final number. Which yeah, uh, you yeah. know, that's not the biggest venue in the world, but. You know, 900 people were packed in there pretty tight. But it, it's, I think, it's, in my own personal opinion, it's about the best wrestling venue probably in, in the tri-state area that I've been to. Um, as far as, you know, it's comfortable, it's big enough. It, and plus, like I said, we have all the, the gadgets and gizmos and lights and sirens and all the, the little toys to help enhance the, the show experience. Excellent, excellent. Uh, before we get to the big thing that we brought you on for, I do want to ask, because I, I discovered that uh, you are going to be in AIW this Sunday as well. Uh, in a four-way match with, uh, if I got this right, Facade, uh, Mercer, and Gargano, uh, two friends of the show in there, uh, and the winner, I believe, gets the AIW title, which is vacant, and uh, gets to uh, uh, take a crack at Brian Danielson that same night. Is that right? Oh, see, I didn't know. I, was, I didn't know the, the Brian Danielson thing was involved. <laughs> I knew. I, I knew. I, I'd seen the, the updates. This is how you know independent wrestling. I find out oh, yeah. more stuff when I get well, there. Beyond. This. Know, this. But, is, uh, I only yeah, know. I knew it today. I. Yeah, I knew it to the IW title. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that you know that's always pretty exciting. I honestly don't, I don't remember ever actually losing that title. I know I had the the absolute title for a long time. I don't think I ever lost it for some reason or another. I'm not the champion anymore. I don't think I ever lost it, so I'll get a chance to win that back. But uh, the guy to look out for uh, on the indies uh, is Tommy Mercer. He's actually coming in for the Warrior Show. Mm-hmm. If you haven't seen this guy, he's he's an absolute monster. He's about six six, six seven, just jacked to the gills. You know, just just an awesome talent. I, I'm making the call right now. I, I think it'll be a very short period of time between you know him appearing on the Indies and WWE signing him up. You say, is this the gentleman that goes by nice. No Mercy, Tommy Mercer? Yeah, No Mercy, Tommy Mercer. The, the, the dude's awesome, and he's a cool guy. But and, mm-hmm. and in the ring, he gets it done too. But I'm saying the guy's just. As far as the independents go, you don't see guys that look like him very often. You know, they're they're once in a once in a blue moon. Someone that big and and agile comes along, and he's definitely something special. But uh, that said, I'm still going to beat him. 
<laughs> well, uh, uh, going with that, <laughs> since you're so sure you're going to beat him, uh, and the opportunity to take on Danielson, if I if I have this straight. Uh, so, uh, what do, what do you think of the situation going on there? I don't know how much again you know, you've been following with it, you know that news uh, with his firing in WWE. Yeah. I'm actually very out of the loop as far as WWE goes. Mm-hmm. Um, I keep in touch with Punk, just mm-hmm. and we very rarely talk wrestling. It's generally we talk about baseball or other <laughs> stupid things. Um, so I, I actually just so happened to be, I was getting into bed, actually. That's how much of a party animal I was. I was getting into bed at like 10.50 a few weeks ago, and I was flipping through the channels, and the NXT beatdown came in. And I didn't know you know many of the guys other than Danielson and uh, Tyrone Evans. Mm-hmm. And I thought, you know, I just kept it on there. I was watching it kind of interesting, something different. And then I saw, I saw Brian choking out, uh, Justin Roberts with his tie. And I actually <laughs> laughed about it. You know, I was like, wow, that's, that's, that's kind of a cool shot. And then the next morning I got up and I heard all this nonsense about them letting him go. And mm-hmm. I don't, I don't expect, I've been hearing people say it's a work. It's, it's, it's legit. I, I don't know what it is, but, uh, whatever. I, I hope it is a work. Because Brian works hard, man. He's worked harder than just about anybody I know, and, and the guy deserves a shot to shine on the national stage. And a little taste that he's gotten, from what I understand, he's done really well. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I I want to I obviously wish success to any of my friends in the business. So I, I hope it's work. But uh, if it's not, then I will gladly continue to beat on him on the Indies. Oh, he did, yeah, he, def- he definitely didn't have any trouble uh, ending up on every show I could think of in the next month. So. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right, and now again, you know, this Friday, you're taking on Butterbean. I am. Yes. Uh, now, we talked to him right before talking to you, of course. Uh, now, when we did ask him, we were like, you know, are you concerned? You know, you're, you're stepping into a restless ring, and he sounded a little worried, to be quite honest. Really? Yeah, yeah. He, he was yeah, really I, like... I, 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 was, I did the, the radio show on 93.7 The Fan with him uh, the other day. We had an interview with John Burton. It was on Sunday afternoon, mm-hmm. and, you know... He was he was talking talking a little bit of smack. Okay, okay. He didn't seem too concerned. Truth be told, I was a little concerned mm-hmm. because you know I don't like getting punched in the face at any point, let alone by a four hundred pound man who does it for a living. <laughs> um, I think it's gonna be fun. I'm actually curious to see you know how it works out. Butterbean is no stranger to the wrestling business, mm-hmm. um, and I actually have been delving into the world of MMA a little bit. I just started training. Um, I think that's kind of going to be my next venture here in the world of sports. Um, not anytime in the immediate future, but hopefully by the end of the year, I think I'd like to step into a cage and or ring or whatever it is. But uh, So I've been doing a lot of training in that and kind of unintentionally honing my skills. So it's going to be interesting. You're going to basically see it at high rate. I promise you it will be a lot, a lot better than Antonio Inoki and Muhammad Ali. <laughs> have you ever seen that? Have you ever seen you're that not, match? So you're saying you're not just going to lay on the mat and kick at his legs until uh, he gets out exactly. of the ring? I, I, I may lay on the I'm going to lay on the mat and just wait for him to come. And let me put him in guard for jujitsu. That's what it's going to be. <laughs> but uh, no. But yeah, that was honestly like one of the most boring things I've ever sat through in my life. So I promise you, it will be you know more exciting than that. But I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> I am honestly. Butterbean's a you know a, a celebrity. He's not just a he's not a wrestler. He's not a you know, anything. He's everything. He's he's a celebrity in that he's he's a fighter. He's an MMA fighter. He's a boxer. He's been in movies. He's been on TV, and uh, so I mean, it's kind of exciting to, to be able to get in the same ring with him and and then show him what what it is that I do. Excellent, excellent. So tell me, tell me, uh, kind of along those lines, what do you have that Bart Gunn and uh, Sean O'Hare didn't? Uh, you have to give me more than like 30 seconds to respond to that one because I have to think. <laughs> Mark Gunn and Sean O'Hare, both like six foot five, six foot six, jack to the heel guys. Mm-hmm. I, um, I can honestly say I, I know what it is. I have wrestled the Necro Butcher and Madman Pondo in Japan. Oh, in yeah. Matches, and, I've come yeah. Out, and I've come out victorious. You took, you so took, I have that. You took a few staples in that match, if I remember. I've taken staples. I think Pondo stabbed me in the head with a knife of some sort, thumbtacks. You know, you name it. It's been done. So I, I, I've I've got that going for me. And I'm not just like I said. I, I, I'm not just the uh, the typical pro wrestler. I'm not you know. I'm not going to go out there and do only pro wrestling. I, I'm actually quite capable and well versed in various other forms of combat. 
so we'll see. I mean, I don't know what good anything's going to be against a 400-pound guy. Like, my mm. jiu-jitsu may be strong, but I don't think it's going to really work <laughs> against the guy the size of Butterbean. <laughs> But uh, so it's it's not going to be we'll like uh, Hogan versus Rocky in Rocky Three, right? It's not. No, it's not going to be that bad. But it, it, that would be more entertaining, would it not? I mean, it may, <laughs> the roles would be reversed. If if Thunderlips was the boxer and Rocky was the wrestler, that may be how it ends up. <laughs> he may, there's, there's a small chance he may throw me into like the third or fourth row. I don't know. So, so if you pay, exactly. if you paid the money for the uh, for the gold circle seating, you may uh, end up with a souvenir. Uh, <laughs> That's right, Jim. You may actually be able to take me home in your pocket. That's right, because I will changing. be in pieces. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> um, there we, again. I didn't know you were training uh, MMA. What do you? And we asked this about butter being a little earlier. What do you think of uh, all these wrestlers? Like. Uh, like of course, yeah, Brock Lesnar and uh, Bobby Lashley have gone over. There's talk about guys like Batista and and, and uh, Pittsburgh's own Kurt Angle going in MMA. What do you think about this kind of uh, uh, flux of people, uh, you know, talking about at least uh, and and seeing about going into MMA in general? I think it's kind of a natural progression in that you know the wrestling business and MMA is different as they are, and mm-hmm. they are very different. They're similar in the mindset. I mean, it's a combat sport. It, it's it's macho. It's you know. I'm tougher than you, even even you know in the pro wrestling world. But uh, you know, obviously, I'm I'm super excited to see what what else Brock does now that he's back from being sick. Um, I'm, I will be watching him and Carlin on the third. Mm-hmm. Check that out. Uh, Lashley has had some pretty good success. But the thing with the difference between Lashley and Lesnar, and even Angle, is those guys were amateur wrestlers. They they found their way into the pro wrestling world, and and they ended up in the world of entertainment after. They had their background in that. A guy like Batista, Batista was a sports entertainer first, and I, I'm kind of the same some same mindset. You know, I, I have I wrestled. I mean, I have, I have athletic background. I wrestled up until high school, and, and you know, um, I'm not just for the first time in my life competing in anything. But um, I think it's awesome to see the success that you guys are having, and I think Brock Lesnar is honestly about the best thing to happen to UFC in a long time for marketability purposes. As an MMA fan, I think it's awesome that, that the, the company is just growing like it seems to be nonstop. Um, every you know you're you're getting a lot of national exposure, and there's always new TV shows and specials about it. And uh, so, and, and as for myself personally, it's something that I kind of fell into. Um, I had a friend of a, I had some friends of a friend that, that train MMA. They actually used to own a gym with Mac Danzig of UFC, and. Um, you know, I, I started just working out with them just kind of as a workout, just to kind of stay in shape. And uh, they actually came to me after after one of our training sessions and said, hey, man, did you ever, did you ever think about fighting? And I said, honestly, no. It was just kind of, I just wanted a new workout, something different. I got a little bored with everything. And they said, well, uh, in our opinion, it might be something you uh, you should try because we think you'd be really good at it. So, uh, you know, that's kind of caused me to step my game up. And seeing as how I'm from Pittsburgh, and now you know I have a I have a radio show on an FM radio, and Kurt Angle's a Pittsburgh guy. I laid down the challenge on on the air last Sunday. If Kurt Angle wants to do his MMA thing, give me a few months. We'll do it for charity or something. I want to be Kurt Angle's first legitimate MMA match, and we can do it for Pittsburgh for some charity, maybe Children's Hospital or something killer like that. Yeah, definitely. Nice, excellent. So. um well, okay. Right. Every every time every time Kurt Angle's talked about getting into the, you know doing MMA, he talks and talks and talks and talks, and then he has a reason mm-hmm. to back out. He he doesn't want to do this. He doesn't want to do striking. He just wants to do grappling. That's fine. He can make the rules, <laughs> whatever he wants to do. I just want you know what I mean. Like, like I said, let's do it for charity. I got nothing to, that you know. I got nothing to lose. He's got nothing to lose. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. I mean, I, I, truth be told, he, I'm sh- reasonably sure he'd probably beat me. But hey, you know what? It's it's for fun. If some people run marathons to test themselves. I've decided I want to fight professional athletes. You know, that's going to be my new thing. <laughs> nice. Well, you heard it here second, right here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, Kurt Angle versus SJK. Uh, let's make this happen. Right, guys, I'm telling you, let's make it happen. I, I want your I want your assistance. I want yeah. we can make this totally independent of any you know, organizational promotion. This isn't about indie wrestling. Like I said, let's do it for charity. 
Uh, I don't, I'm not looking to make any money. I just, let's just have some fun with it. So you got to take the ball and run with it. I'm entrusting it in your hands. You know, I, you know, I want to put that out there. If you go to KurtAngleTNA.net, it's his official website. Uh, I know we, we've we've tried putting some stuff through there before. There is a... Uh, Let's see, they move stuff around here. Da, 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 da. But go go there. There's going to be a contact there. We'll find it. He's got Facebook and Twitter. Flood that. Go to KurtAngleTNA.net. Tell him, tell him to face SJK. Tell, tell him about this. Tell him to face SJK. We'll put the mayhem the mayhem. And, like the, and, and, and I just want to clarify. This, I'm, not, I'm not looking to, to make my name at his expense or, mm-hmm. or you know, this is, no, this is no sort of cheap heat thing. I got all the respect in the world for Kurt Angle. He's one of my favorite professional wrestlers. I mean, I respect everything he's ever done. I just, it, it, there always seems to be an issue whenever he wants to make that crossover to MMA. And I'm willing to be, you know, I, I'm willing to totally accommodate him as much as he wants. Whatever he wants to do, as long as it's, you know, fair and balanced, I'm in. I'm in. Maybe maybe I'll be like the Malky brothers of, of UFC, of MMA. Maybe I'll just get beat up by everybody. But whatever it is, <laughs> I'm, I'm crossing that line. It just matters that you're there, right? That's right. Excellent. All right. Well, of course, uh, Well, what else is coming up for SJK in the future uh, beyond this Friday? Um, you know, I got this once the summertime picks up. I got some more international stuff going back to England again, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually got an email the other day doing another tour throughout Europe. I'm going to do, I believe it's Germany, Ireland, France, and England again. Um, and, and you know, obviously, always doing new independent companies here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, my schedule's kind of, I'm actually making a point to kind of ease my schedule up a little bit so that I can train MMA. So even though I may not be fighting Kurt Angle, I will be fighting sometime in the, you know, not too distant future. So I want to be able to concentrate on that. And, um, you know, we'll see where it goes from there. I got this, this radio show on 93.7 The Fan here in Pittsburgh. And I've been doing that. That's a lot of fun. I mean, I get paid pretty well to talk about sports for uh, hours at a time. So that's kind of cool. But, um, yeah, so I'm just staying really busy, man. I mean, I'm, I'm happy. You know, my, my, Family's doing awesome. I have no complaints about anything. I just waiting to see what the uh, what the world holds next for SJK. Excellent. And you can check out SJK and Butterbean this Friday, June twenty fifth, at uh, Chess Arena in Cheswick, PA. Check out the information fnwwrestling.net. Like we mentioned, it should be on DVD uh, shortly after for all you guys that are in the Pittsburgh area to check it out and see what happened. So that's right. And if you're not in the Pittsburgh area, it will still be on DVD. So you can order it and we will ship it to you. Excellent. Uh, (laughs) So go check that out. Thank you very much. Sterling James Cannon for joining us once again on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You're always welcome back, sir. Hey, thank you, guys. It's a pleasure uh, hanging out with you guys. And, you know, anytime you guys want me back, I'd be glad to glad to join you. All right. Thanks a lot, man. All right, guys. Thank you, uh, SJK and uh, Butterbean for joining us. Of course, check them out at the website. And uh, let's toss some music. We'll be back, and we're going to have a good bit of discussion and stuff falling on people's heads, apparently.